Why did Rox go to God Valley and what did it have to do with becoming king of the world? What did Garp, Roger, Whitebeard, and Big Mom see there that changed their perspective on the world? How did God Valley disappear from the world? Where was it located? Where is it located now? What is the Emerald City? In this video, I dive deep as anyone can into all these questions. Somehow, it all connects to NL, his backstory, and ultimately, his return in the series. This is officially the final part to the Ultimate God Valley series, and boy, I absolutely can't wait to share what I found out. Trust me, you are going to be mind blown. If you skip Skypea, you're going to want to really pay attention and possibly even watch Skypea after the video because it's officially the most important arc in all of One Piece. Remember to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more insane One Piece content. And now, let's get into it. One Piece wa... Oh, oh. In chapter 224, Bellamy tells us of a legendary place called the Emerald City. He speaks on it as if it's some sort of legend just like Skypea and the One Piece. He believes that they're just legends because almost no man has gone to these places except for legendary explorers like the Pirate King. Since in the story we've seen for ourselves that the City of Gold and the One Piece are real, we could only assume that the Emerald City is also real. But what kind of city could it be where we only heard of it once in the entire story? Well, I'd assume that it's a city that was erased from history. And that also reminds me of another place and event that was also erased from history, which was the incident at God Valley. So what if God Valley is the legendary Emerald City? I think it is, especially since it looks like an identical outline to the actual Emerald City in The Wizard of Oz. I saw this on a Reddit post a while back and I believed it the instant I saw it. So now, well, why does this matter? What does the Emerald City have to do with why rocks went to God Valley? Well, ever since I saw that reddit post, which was about a year ago, I figured that God Valley had the secrets to immortality. I believe the Emerald City will have something to do with the Emerald Tablet. In real life, ancient Egypt has a legend of something called the Emerald Tablet, written by Herms Trismegistus, and it tells you how to achieve immortality. Medieval alchemists associated the Emerald Tablet with the creation of the Philosopher's Stone and the artificial production of gold, which are things that can be created when you learn the secrets to immortality. So how would the Emerald City have the Emerald Tablet? Well, I was thinking that God Valley could have had a Poneglyph or some ancient relic that tells the reader how to achieve immortality. I believe that it tells the reader how to specifically perform the Eternal Youth operation using the op, op Nomi. Now if this was the place where you could learn how to become immortal, wouldn't that also explain why Rox wanted to go there in the first place? Sengoku told us that Rox's ambition was to become the king of the world. Now how do you you become the king of the world in one piece wouldn't you have to overthrow the world government and the actual king of the world and doesn't it seem that the actual king of the world who goes by the name of emu is in fact immortal also another thing that the op op nomi can do is allow someone to use the national treasure of marijoa and control the world itself in other words it can allow someone to become the king of the world maybe you also learn about this at god valley i think the reason for this has to do with the original king or kings of the world even before emu and i'll explain more about it throughout the video but even with all this being said it really does seem that god valley had something to do with becoming the king of the world not only because rocks wanted to go there but also because god valley in japanese can be translated as the gods exposed the word used for valley is pronounced bada and it means exposed so if this is the place where the gods are exposed maybe they're exposed there because it shows proof of the original gods which are the Lunarians. The proof of Lunarians would truly expose the celestial dragons since it would show that there was once a time where they weren't the gods of the world. It even seems that the celestial dragons took everything the Lunarians had since they took their home of the red line. They also erase them from history and give high rewards for even information on their race. Maybe the reason they're scared of people finding out about their existence is because just like the ancient kingdom it would change the public's view on the world. 
It is also my belief that a Lunarian was the king of the ancient kingdom and this may be yet another reason why they don't want people finding out about them. I believe the reason Kairo named Albert king is because he found out the truth at God Valley and called him what one of his ancestors were. With this being said, I also want to make it clear that the king of the ancient kingdom doesn't seem to be Joy Boy. I believe Joy Boy was the previous or possibly even the first king of the pirates and I just can't see someone with the modern Nikafru being a king or political ruler of such a massive nation. Although Joy Boy may not be the king of the ancient kingdom, he was still definitely associated with the ancient kingdom and boy is there many hints to it. It's kind of like how Luffy is friends with everyone in the world but isn't a ruler or anything of that sort. He just lives freely and has fun. I will explain who I believe Joy Boy was later in the video and what it has to do with rocks and God Valley. Evidence of the Lunarian's race at God Valley also makes sense since the only people who even know of their existence are former rocks members. We see Whitebeard bring them up to Marco. Big Mom say that she needs King's Rays to be a part of her family and Kaido making King his right hand man. They may have all learned about this race that was extinguished from history at the God Valley incident. Another way God Valley could have exposed the gods is by the Poneglyph. Just like how I said the Poneglyph that was there may be based off of the Emerald Tablet. Well what if it does tell you how to do both the Eternal Youth Operation and how to obtain the Sacred Treasure of Marijua but in a story format. We know that one type of the Poneglyphs is a historical Poneglyph. I believe there's a Poneglyph at God Valley which tells the reader how Emu became immortal by forcing a Lunarian to do the operation, how Emu overthrew the Lunarians, and lastly, where the sacred treasure of Marijawa is, how to obtain it, and what it can do. I've already explained in my part 2 video of this Mega God Valley series why I believe Law's fruit, the Opop Nomi, is the fruit that carries on the will of the Lunarians. To recap just a bit of why this could be true, wouldn't it just make sense that a Lunarian was the one that placed the sacred treasure at Marijawa since they used to live there? I mean, there definitely seems to be some sort of connection with the celestial dragons and the Lunarians since they chose to live exactly where the Lunarians used to live. What if the only reason they even live on top of the red line is because the treasure of Marijawa was placed there? It seems that you can't obtain the treasure unless you have the fruit that a moon god may have used to place it there in the first place. Also, like I said in part 2, it seems that Law is destined by the will of D to find his own treasure or his own one piece. Just like how the sun god left the one piece for the next sun god to find, it seems that Law is destined to carry on the will of the moon god and find the treasure that a moon god left for a future will of D member with the same fruit to find. So if the Poneglyph at God Valley can expose any of this, it would make sense with everything that I've now explained and it would also make sense why the celestial dragons wanted to already hide God Valley from the world. Yeah, that's right. The world government already didn't want anyone to know the existence of God Valley even before Rox went there. Sangoku tells us that after the event took place, they erased it all from history. He describes that they erased rocks from history because he broke one too many taboos. This definitely seems to be the taboo that ultimately erased him from history since they erased both him and the island itself from the history books. He definitely learned something key to the void century on that island and it is to my belief that he had someone who could read Poneglyphs. The God Valley incident was about 15 years before the Ohara incident so rocks could have definitely had someone from Ohara who could read the ancient language. In fact, one of the biggest questions to me and the God Valley incident that no one ever brings up is how the hell did Rox even learn about its existence and that going there would make him the king of the world? In fact, how did he even learn that there is such a thing as a king of the world? Wouldn't you have to learn about Emu's mere existence to have the ambition to overthrow his or her rulership? For example, Doflamingo also wanted to become the king of the world, but he's the type of guy that would know about Emu since since he's a former celestial dragon and since he saw things like the sacred treasure. So how did Rox learn about such things? Well, it is my belief that he may have had a former celestial dragon on his crew that leaked secret knowledge on the world government and on God Valley. In part one of this theory, I explained why I believe that Shanks is half celestial dragon and half will of D and why Rox might be his father. I also explained how if this happened, then Shanks may have been found and picked up by Roger on God Valley. So if Rox Rox himself had a wife or at least a crew member that was a former celestial dragon and that knew the secrets to God Valley and the world government then maybe she told him where God Valley is, why he should go there and lastly that he can become the king of the world. Another possible explanation to Rox's ambitions could be that either
either he himself was an archaeologist and historian, or someone on his crew was. An O'Haran could have told him about such legends, since we do learn from Professor Clover that you can learn things about the Void Century, not only from Poneglyphs, but also from ancient manuscripts and books. Maybe An O'Haran found out about the existence of something key to God Valley, like Lunarians, Imusama, or something along those lines. So now that you understand why I think rocks went to God Valley, now let me explain what it has to do with the ancient kingdom, Joy Boy, and most importantly, Skypea. So I believe that the City of Gold and God Valley are direct parallels with each other and that God Valley may even be the true left eye of Jaya. So to start my reasons why, let me tell you why I believe they are both connected with Ors the First, whom I believe to be Joy Boy. If you've already heard the Ors is Joy Boy theory before, then skip to this timestamp. So I believe Ors the First is Joy Boy. And by the way, I call him Ors the First because I believe that the Ors in Thriller Bark was actually Ors the Second. The reason I believe this is because Ors Jr. is actually Ors the Third. I explain this relationship between the Ors family better in my other videos, so I recommend checking out those videos if you're interested. I mainly believe Ors was Joy Boy for many reasons, and one of them is because Ors' introduction scene in Thriller Bark is identical to the giant straw hat scene during the Reverie. You see Moria walk into a giant freezer, just like how Emu walks into a giant freezer. Moria is carrying Luffy's shadow. Emu is carrying Luffy's wanted poster. After this, Moria puts Luffy's shadow into Oars, showing that the Oars race is connected with Luffy or Joy Boy. Also, take a look at Luffy's shadow during the very first time we see Oars. Look familiar? Oh yeah, that's right. It looks exactly like the Sun God Nika shadow that Oda drew when Luffy became Joy Boy and when explaining the Sun God Nika with Who's Who. This isn't just the only panel that Oda does this to. Go read chapters 456 and 457 and see for yourself that when we see Oars for the first time, Oda deliberately drew the shadow of Sun God Nika or Joy Boy over and over again in multiple panels. So going back to the parallels with the giant straw hat scene, all these hints may prove that that straw hat belonged to someone from the Oars race. Okay, so the next hint that Oars the first was Joy Boy is that Oars Jr. wore a giant straw hat hinting that an Oars from the Void Century may have been the owner of the giant straw hat. The next hint is that Oars' kanji or spelling in Japanese is the same exact spelling as the name of the Norse sun god in certain translations. Okay, so now for the next hint of Joy Boy has to do with God Valley, Shandora, Rox, Roger, Blackbeard, and Luffy. If God Valley is directly tied to the ancient kingdom, then it wouldn't only be connected with Lunarians, but also Joy Boy. So the first connection with these guys has to do with their names. If you dissect the connection of Roger, Rox, and Orz's names, then it starts to seem that Oda named them things so specifically to show that they are connected with each other. So first, let's look at all their first names. Roger, Orz, and Zebek. In case you don't know, the three of these words are all connected to a pirate ship. The word Roger is connected with pirates since it's the word for pirate flags, Jolly Roger. Orz is the word for the sticks that pirates and sailors use to steer and propel their ships or boats. So what does a Roger and Orz belong to? Well, that would be a Zebek. Zebek is the word for a small three-mast Mediterranean ship, or in simple terms, a pirate ship. So now that you see how their first names are connected, now let's also look at their last names. I will use the word gold for Roger, since the first time we see his name, it is Gold Roger and not Gold D. Gold D is also just an obvious wordplay that Oda did with the word gold. There's also another reason why, but I'll explain that in a bit. So gold is obviously an element that comes from the earth. Same thing with the word rocks. What happens when you take gold and rocks and put them together? Well, you would end up with golden ores, spelled as an O-R-E-S. Gold and rocks put together creates golden ores. So now that it seems that Oda made very specific connections with the three of these characters' names, there's even more connections which have to do with the Wizard of Oz. We know that Oda uses many references from big and well-known stories like The Boy That Cried Wolf, Journey to the West, Pinocchio, and countless others. Knowing this, I'd be surprised if he didn't have any Wizard of Oz references, and I think I actually found proof that he does have them. So Goldie Roger represents the Yellow Brick Road in the Wizard of Oz. As mentioned before, his name was originally Gold, and it's also a pun with Goldie. Next has to do with the description of the Yellow Brick Road. In the Wizard of Oz, it says, they are currently striding along the Yellow Brick Road to fame, the first step on the Yellow Brick Road to fame and riches. Now, doesn't this sound somewhat familiar? Notice how the very single first page of One Piece says, Gold Roger, 
the king of the pirates had achieved it all. Wealth, fame, and power had all been his. In another English translation, it says, wealth fame, power. Once there was a man who took everything in this world, Pirate King Gold Rogers. So as you can see, Goldie Rogers symbolizes the yellow brick road in One Piece since he achieved wealth and fame which is exactly what it leads to in The Wizard of Oz. The third and final hint that shows that Roger has some inspirations from the yellow brick road is that he went to the city of gold. The yellow brick road is a road made out of gold just like how he was the one to find the city of gold in Skypea and even wrote a message on the gold belt. Okay, so now that you understand how he represents the yellow brick road, now to why Rox is connected to the Emerald City in the Wizard of Oz. So as I said before, it seems that God Valley is the legendary Emerald City that Bellamy was talking about. Now this is obviously connected to Rox since he was the one who committed and is remembered by the God Valley incident. So now that Roger represents the yellow brick road and Rox the Emerald City, how is this connected with Oars? Well, it's connected to Oars since Oars' name is actually meant to be Oz, just like the Wizard of Oz. In many translations, you'll see that Oz's name is actually spelled Oz, O-Z. This is simply because his name in Japanese is pronounced the exact same as Oz in the Wizard of Oz. In Japanese, it is pronounced Azu. So how and why did Shonen Jump translate Azu into Oz instead of simply calling him Oz? Well, what if Oda himself deliberately told them to do it that way for all of these wordplay connections that I have now connected. We know how Oda loves his wordplay and if you've seen any of Uteron's or Ohara's videos on it, you'll see how far he's willing to take it. Also, by the way, in case you don't know, this is how I received my name, the Wizard of Oars. It's a pun from my very first video. So now, if you thought that those were the last connections with Oars, Roger, and Rox, then well sorry, but there's somehow even more. For these next connections, I will also be adding Luffy and Blackbeard into them since they seem to be carrying on the wills of Roger and Sabe in a way. So for the next one, Luffy and Roger are connected to Oars because of their straw hats. I believe the Oars from the Void Century was the owner of the giant straw hat and we know how important it is with Carrie and Will. For Blackbeard and Rox, they are connected to Oars with their Jolly Rogers. Notice how Blackbeard's Jolly Roger is the exact same thing as what both Oars and Oars Jr. wear. Just like the straw hat, this three skull symbol may be passed down from Joy Boy or the Oars raised from the Void Century since we see Oars wear it on a rope around his body and then Oars Jr. wear it as a necklace. Another way Blackbeard's Jolly Rogers connected with Oars has to do with the real Blackbeard. The real Blackbeard, also known as Edward Teach, had a Jolly Roger with the devil on it. In case you don't know, Oars is known as the devil of One Piece. I wonder if there's something more to the devil and Blackbeard. Now, Rox's Jolly Roger is connected to Oars because he literally has an Oni on it and another one as his ship's figurehead. I wonder how he also learned about the Oni race and even decided to make it his Jolly Roger. So now that you know all these connections, you may wonder, well, why do they matter? They matter because Joy Boy being directly tied to Rox, Roger, God Valley, and Shandora may prove that God Valley was a part of the ancient kingdom. I believe all of these connections also prove that Shandora and the City of Gold are connected because God Valley may even be the missing chunk out of the left eye of Jaya. Although I don't think Joy Boy was the king of the ancient kingdom, I still think he's the rope that links all men just like how Luffy is. At God Valley, there are probably signs of Joy Boy and the Void Century War, just like there is of the Moon God's existence, but we'll get more into that with NL. Also, just like how Preach said in Part 4, the Massacre of the Lunarians may have initiated the beginning of the Void Century and of the ancient war that took place. Joy Boy always fights for his friends, and the reason it may be a 100 year gap in history is because the previous Joy Boy could live for hundreds of years since he may have been an ancient giant. We know that the Elbaps can live up to 300 years, and I'd expect the Onis to be able to to live just as long, maybe even longer. You'd have to erase a hundred years from history because that's how long Joy Boy lived or existed. Going back to how God Valley and Shindora are connected and possibly even parts of the same island, what if God Valley got its name from the people of the ancient kingdom or basically even before the celestial dragons? We know that people associated with the ancient kingdom call locations with godly names like when we see Skypea is called Godland. We also see other places called Heaven's Gate, Angel Island, 
island, and of course, the Holy Land. The Holy Land, or Shandora as a whole, seems to worship the Sun God and even seems to have many relics that prove the existence of the Sun God. We see that in Shandora, all of their signs of God have Oni skulls on them. These are the same Oni, or horn skulls, that Kara uses throughout all of Wano to represent the Beast Pirates. This sign of God also has the logo of the Sun, with eight circles around it, which we also see in Alabasta, Wano, and other places as well. We can assume that those countries are associated with the Sun God and ultimately the Ancient Kingdom. We also see the Shandians wear masks that are literally oars. So yet again, you can see the people that worship the Sun God have oars connections. The biggest connection would be that they have oars statues laid out throughout all of Upper Yard or what once was Jaya. Even the Skypeans worship these statues, but they call them Birth or Var statues instead of what they really are, which are statues of the original Sun God or oars. Shandora as a whole seems to be based off of the Mayan city of Teotihuacan. We even see exact drawings by Oda that depict the city when he draws things like Quetzalcoatl, which is a god of the ancient Mayans. Now, if all of Jaya and Upper Yard is based off of this, then wouldn't that mean that Shandora is based off of the Pyramid of the Sun? The Shandians even do human sacrifices for the sun, just like the Mayans. So, now if the right eye of Jaya, or Shandora, is dedicated to the sun, then shouldn't the left eye of Jaya be dedicated to the moon. If it is, then wouldn't that explain that God Valley is the left eye of Jaya? As I explained before, I believe that God Valley holds secrets of the Lunarians and even proves their existence. We learned that 800 years ago, the Shandians had to fight off the celestial dragons and the current world government to keep their land. If they had to, then wouldn't it make sense that the left eye of Jaya also had people defending their sacred temple and land? And just like how the world government took the red line from the Lunarians, what if they also took the Lunarian temples from the ancient kingdom. By the way, I don't think God Valley was the home to the Lunarians. I think it was just a place that was dedicated to the race. Kind of like how Shandora is dedicated to the sun god. I also don't think that the Ors race or Ors himself lived at Shandora or even Jaya. Another thing that connects God Valley and Shandora is that both of these temples symbolize immortality in a way. I already explained earlier how I believe the Emerald City will have the Emerald Tablets, but gold also symbolizes immortality. In alchemy, the Philosopher's Stone allows one to know and hold the secrets of immortality, allowing you to transmute lead into pure gold. Creating gold was the ultimate goal of the medieval alchemists and philosophers because once they could do that, they could also be immortal. We also know that at the One Piece, you find some sort of secret to immortality that no one else in the world knows because Roger's last words to his right-hand man Ray Lee is, I'm not gonna die, partner. It's interesting that he said this since he said it as a dying man who is about to turn himself in and get his head chopped. Roger himself seems to know that he's not going to ever die since his will will be passed on. Dr. Hiraluk already told us that a man doesn't die until he's forgotten. So as you can see, there's a lot of immortality references in One Piece and one seems to be physically immortal, which is Emu, while the other seems to be based on will, which is represented throughout the whole will of D-Clan. The ancient people knew about this and that could explain why Oda chose them to have a city of gold and a city of emeralds. Another thing is that yet again, Roger, the same guy who represents gold and found the city of gold, is two sides of the same coin with rocks. Just like how Roger realized that he is immortal, rocks realized that he wanted to be immortal but in a different way. Rocks wanted to become immortal in the same way that Emu is. He wanted to physically be immortal with his physical body never being able to age. Roger realized that his physical body will die and decay, but the immortal part of him will always live on. His spirit, soul, and will will live on to the future generations. Just like how when a philosopher learns the secrets to immortality, they can create gold. Goldie Roger learned the secrets to immortality, which is why he is symbolized by gold. The emerald tablets tell you the key to immortality, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you learn the secret. You can read the tablet, but not understand it, which is the case with most people. This is just like how Rox may have found the emerald tablet in One Piece, or at least symbolized it. He tried finding the secrets to becoming immortal, but didn't actually achieve it. So now that you understand why I believe God Valley is actually the left eye of Jaya, the moon temple, and lastly, the emerald city, now let's talk about what actually happened to the island itself, how it went missing from the world, and how we might already know what island it is, except of course, it now goes by a different name. So I believe that there are five ways God Valley could have gone missing. The first most obvious way is by a buster call. I find this unlikely though because there were celestial dragons there. The second way is by Fujitora's Fruit. Fujitora's fruit
crew can control gravity and an awakening of his could potentially pick a whole island up from the ground itself. If someone was at the God Valley incident with Fujitor's awakened fruit, they could have potentially picked up the island itself and sent it off somewhere in the sky or even in space where it could no longer be found. The third way God Valley could have been erased from history is from Kaido. We know that Kaido obtained his fruit the day of God Valley and if he got so angry after Rox's death, he may have lifted the island up as a whole while being in a trance state of anger. Again, he may have lifted it up all the way to the point where it would land somewhere in the sky, no longer to be found by anyone in the blue sea. I wonder if Kaido's first appearance in a sky island could be foreshadowing something with this. The last two possibilities have to do with Whitebeard. Whitebeard could have sent a tsunami over God Valley or could have destroyed the entire island with his awakening of the Gura Gura Nomi. We continuously see Sankoku say in Marineford that Whitebeard has the power to destroy the world and this would hit harder if he saw firsthand Whitebeard destroy the entire island of God Valley. The final way I think God Valley could have gone missing is if Whitebeard used his fruit awakening but instead of destroying the island itself, he created a knockup stream to shoot God Valley up into the sky. If he did this, I would think it probably was an accident and theoretically he could do this with his devil fruit if he shifted something underneath the island itself either from an underneath volcano or under the water. I also don't think that whatever the world government did in chapter 1060 with Sabo happened at God Valley and here's why. First off, if they wanted God Valley to not be known to the public even before the Rocks Pirates ambushed it, then why didn't they just blow it up beforehand? The second thing that doesn't make any sense is why do they have buster calls if they had this weapon? We saw them use a buster call in the Ohara flashback and also at Ennis Lobby. If the Oharan archaeologists actually did find out the name of the ancient kingdom, then why wouldn't they just use this power since it's kind of a plot hole that they never used it before. Also, could Ennis Lobby possibly be the place where God Valley once stood? I know Uteron's Ennis Lobby theory makes a ton of sense, but if the world government once owned God Valley, then wouldn't it make sense if its location was somewhere within the Gates of Justice? Another location that God Valley could have been located back in the day is right in the middle of the triangle. I don't know why, but for some reason, from the moment I learned about the Gates of Justice while watching the anime, I instantly thought, what if there was an island in the middle? In One Piece, I feel like anything is possible, so you never know honestly. Anyways, let me know in the comments where you think God Valley could have been located and why. So going back to what happened to God Valley, I think any of the possibilities that I mentioned before could have happened, but I think the most likely ones are probably the ones that allowed the island to go up to the sky. First off, if God Valley is the Emerald City, then maybe Oda took the famous line as above, so below, which is from the Emerald Tablet to be literal in his story. Maybe God Valley is now above or in the sky, just as how it once existed down below on the blue sea. If God Valley is the left eye of Jaya, wouldn't it be great writing by Oda if they both ironically ended up being islands that mysteriously went missing from the face of the earth since they somehow went up to the sky. In fact, I believe there is an actual sky island in Skypea that is God Valley and that Oda even told us about in the Skypea arc. This island is now known as the hometown of NL, Burka. This theory takes a bit of explaining to do, but trust me, when I'm done telling you all the details, you will believe that God Valley is Burka just as much as I do. Trust me, there's a lot of evidence. So just like how I said I believe Shanks is from God Valley in the first part of this theory, I also believe NL is from God Valley and even lived there as he grew up in Skypea. The God Valley incident happened 38 years ago and both Shanks and NL are ironically exactly 39 years old. That would make them one year old during the time of the incident. I also believe that NL is an actual celestial dragon but doesn't even know that yet. Most people can point out that NL has the traits of a celestial dragon since he thinks that he's literally God. There can also be many parallels with him and another celestial dragon, Emu. Emu, just like NL, is a ruler of the Holy Land. Emu has five elders and NL has the chosen five from his battle royale. Joy Boy is the natural enemy of Emu and Luffy was the natural enemy of NL. Lastly, Emu wiped out a winged race just like how NL attempted to. We also now know that Emu destroyed an island with lightning or energy powers just like how NL was going to. If NL was an actual celestial dragon, then wouldn't that explain why he's one of the only people that lives in the sky that doesn't have wings? In fact, both Kami or Gods of Skypea don't have wings on their backs and they're the only two people that don't in the whole arc. The other man who was the Kami is Gonfall and he may also be a celestial dragon since he seems to depict one of the five elders and may even be his brother. We also see direct panels 
Rose where Gonfa resembles the five elders and where he seems to bring up his past of being a celestial dragon. On top of this, Gonfa's design also seems to be based off of Don Quixote and of course Don Quixote in One Piece is one of the last names for a celestial dragon family. So if Gonfa is a celestial dragon, it may show that the other false god of Skypiea was also a celestial dragon. I mean the title for these two is quite literally god. Something just doesn't make sense about NL being born in Skypiea since he doesn't have wings. I don't know who his parents could be and it almost seems that he didn't have any growing up because he has no sympathy for humanity and he literally thinks he's a god. What if NL ate the lightning Logia devil fruit when he was a baby at God Valley before the God Valley incident? I mean we do know that there were devil fruits there since Kaido received his fruit from there. Also do you think there's a chance that Kaido's fruit was there because Vegapunk was working on it and created Momo's fruit on that island. I wonder if they were trying to recreate other devil fruits like NLs and possibly laws. This is a mini theory but you never know since Kaido's mythical zone was found there. So let's say that baby NL already had the powers of lightning and when God Valley shot up to the sky he was able to survive because he's lightning itself. Then what if when the Birkins found him they worshipped him all the way back to when he was a baby since he was lightning. Maybe that's how he received his ultimate god complex. If the people that live in the sky didn't understand devil fruit abilities then they really would think he's a god throughout his whole life. So now the main reason I believe NL is from God Valley which actually became known as Burka is because the only time we ever heard about Burka it's described in the exact same way as God Valley. When we learn about Burka the white beret tells us that a sky island far away in the southeastern sky disappeared without a trace six years ago because NL destroyed it. Doesn't this sound almost like the same description for another island? Sengoku tells us that there isn't any map featuring an island called God Valley. As a matter of fact, God Valley itself vanished without a trace. So as you can see, both islands are described as vanishing without a trace, which makes it seem as if they are in some way connected. Plus, wouldn't Burka being God Valley itself explain literally every question that's tied with NL? First off, it explained why NL would want to bring down all of Skypiea and his own hometown back to the ground. If he saw the ruins of God Valley and realized that it was just like Shandora and was from the earth then he probably wanted to put it back down to where it belongs in its natural location. We continuously see NL say things like the foundation of this country in the sky is unnatural. Land is the place for land. Humans have a place for humans and the Kami has a place for the Kami. Each has a place to which it must return. After this we see him say that as God he is only following the laws of nature and putting humans and the land back where it belongs. He legitimately believes that it's his duty as Kami to do what is natural on earth. The next mystery it solves is that NL believes that Kami should actually live on the moon. Now where did he get these beliefs? Well he may have received them from his hometown. If Burka is God Valley and if God Valley is the city sacred to the moon gods, he may have seen ancient relics from the void century depicting the moon and the Lunarians. As Wipeyear did say that the Lunarians were the previous gods before the celestial dragon's rulership, Eno may have learned about this at God Valley just like how it seemed Wipeyear, Kaido, and Big Mom did. Remember, I don't find it a coincidence that the only people who know about the Lunarian's existence are former Rocks members. NL probably learned that the gods of One Piece came from the moon and since he believes that he's a god, he wants to go live up there with them or on God's throne. This would definitely explain his obsession with going to the moon which was never explained in any backstory or any SBS. Oda probably didn't show us NL's backstory in Skypiea because it would have spoiled literally everything about the Void Century and God Valley. I also believe that at God Valley there were Lunarian statues. We already know that the city that worships the sun god had ores or sun god statues so why would the city dedicated to the moon gods also not have Lunarian statues? I feel like the statues may only be as simple as being Lunarian but could also possibly even be Baphomet statues. King's rays seems to be based off of the Baphomet and fallen angels since they have black wings. They also have fire abilities and we always see fire behind King's head just like how the Baphomet has a torch on top of his head. So now the final reason that may prove that there were Baphomet statues and not just simple Lunarian statues is because of all the goat references with the Birkins. The Baphomet is also called the Goat of Mendes because of its goat head. In Skypiea a lot of NL supporters have goat like features with their horns, ears, and faces overall. I'm not quite sure how they receive these facial features but it just seems like a very random and strange thing. It's never been explained if they physically added these features 
pictures after they were born or if they were born like that. If they did see a goat statue at the island, maybe that's a part of why they have these features. Maybe they tried to resemble the god statues, just like how the Shandians resemble the Oars race with Oars masks. Another possibility for there being a Lunarian with a goat head could be that since the Birkins and Lunarian seems to be close in genetics, maybe some of the Lunarians also had goat-like features just like the Birkins. If there were goat-headed statues of Lunarians at God Valley, then maybe that's why Oda made it, whereas Sengoku is explaining the God Valley incident, he is also petting his pet goat. Just like how I said, everyone who witnessed the God Valley incident seems to be some of the only people in the world who know about Lunarians. Well, maybe Sengoku was also at God Valley and later on got a pet goat to show what he believes in. I always found it very random that Sengoku had this pet and it just never really made much sense as to why. This goat also has a golden bell which could be a hint from Oda, yet again showing us that Shandora and God Valley are connected. The next connection with NL, the Birkins, God Valley, and Lunarians may be the very name of the island. The sky people seem to have called the island Burka, which may be called that after the city on the moon, which is also named Burka. Yeah, that's right. In One Piece, there's two locations called Burka, one in the sky and one on the moon. Now, why would that be? Well, what if the reason there's two Burkas is because when the sky people found God Valley, they got it confused with the city that's on the moon since it was a place that had many moon references. Either this or they may have called it after the moon city to honor it. Also, by the way, I know I've been calling the race of NL's men Birkins, but did you know that that isn't even what their race of people is called? Apparently, they've never actually been called Birkins in the manga or by Oda, and the only reason people even call them that is because they're apparently from Burka. Even NL is thought to be a Birkin, but we can clearly see that he doesn't fit the description as anyone else in the sky. So if their race isn't called Birkins, like how the Skypeans are Skypeans and how the Shandians are Shandians, then that honestly puts up the question as to who they truly are. We do know that they are a bit different of a race from the other two previously mentioned, but we still don't know what their race is called. This most likely proves that their race isn't called Birkins, which would mean that the origin of their race isn't from the Sky Island called Burka, which may prove that the Sky Island Burka is a relatively new island. I mean, they say NL was born and raised there, but Oda himself never said that NL or his followers were part of a Birkin race. Hopefully, we find out what the true name of the race is, which may answer a few of the Sky People's mysteries. And by the way, I will still continue to call that race Birkins throughout the video, but just to clarify it so you don't get confused, I'm just referring to them as that because that's what most people call them. The next connection with God Valley and NL would have to also be with the Sun God and the symbol of the Sun. I believe NL also found evidence of Sun God Nika in the ancient hieroglyphs or statues in God Valley. The main reason I believe he is depicting Nika is because he wears drums on his back. Yet again, there was never a single explanation as to why he has drums. What if the reason for this is because he saw hieroglyphic carvings of people playing drums to their god? Either that or maybe he saw the Sun God itself playing drums or having something to do with the drums as the ancient men may have been trying to depict the drums of liberation in their writings. And now thinking that he is God may have been inspired by a god in the God Valley ruins. Even though I think God Valley is the place dedicated to the Lunarians, I can still see them having Sun God references if whatever was at God Valley did in fact expose the gods. Plus, I also think there could be Sun God references because even the Burka that is located on the moon has Sun God references. When NL goes to Burka on the moon, he finds hieroglyphs that clearly show multiple signs of the ancient kingdom. There's one sun on the lower left that has eight rays going out of it, just like how all the people associated with the ancient kingdom have suns with eight circles around it. We also see people with wings, which proves yet again that the moon city has connections with people from the ancient kingdom. So if the real Burka has evidence of the sun, then maybe the false Burka or God Valley also had evidence of the sun god. Another thing with NL that may show that everything he does is based off of what he saw at his hometown could be the ark that he created. Could the ark that he built to take him to his godly throne be based off of the Noah? Yet again, it may be that he saw the legend of the ark and thought that it was his duty as god to create his own. The final thing that doesn't make much sense with what NL seems to know about is the endless birth. He says that the people on the island where he was born believe that God lives on a place called endless birth. He describes this endless birth to be a place where the land stretches out further than the eye can see and as a place where there's limitless earth. We later see that NL believes this legendary island or location called endless birth is in fact the moon. Well, what if I told you
told you that what the people from Enel's home were referring to wasn't actually the moon, but was actually the ancient kingdom. First off, how is the moon Earth or Earth in any way? The moon isn't a place where there's soil, plants, or anything of that sort. We know that Earth is just the sky people's word for Earth, since Gonfall tells us that they worship Earth, since in the sky they can't give birth to plants. Greenery and soil are not things of the sky, and that is why they are Earth. So if Earth is the soil that allows plants to grow, then how is the moon Earth? My belief is that Eno got the moon mixed up with the ancient kingdom. Since he may have seen references to moon gods, he may have believed that the moon was their home or a place where God lives. I think the real place where the gods lived back in the day is the ancient kingdom. We know that the Lunarians did also live on top of the red line, but it wouldn't surprise me if they also lived in the ancient kingdom or if the king of the ancient kingdom lived there. The next reason I believe that the endless Earth is the ancient kingdom is because it describes exactly what the ancient kingdom kingdom may have been. If a Lunarian was the king of the ancient kingdom, then it could have been the home to God or a god, just like how Enel says it's God's home. Also, endless earth or a piece of land that extends further than the eye can see can only be one island that we know of. It could only be the island of the ancient kingdom because Professor Clover describes it to be an enormous or immense kingdom. The third reason I believe endless earth is the ancient kingdom and not the moon is because when Enel describes it, Oda draws a green piece of land being illuminated by the sun. This makes me think that it's actually an island that was once on the blue sea. The sun's illumination could be symbolic for it being a place connected to the sun god. Enel seems to know a lot more than we thought he knew and I can guarantee that his return will be key to the final saga of One Piece. Who knows how much more he's learned while at the moon too. I truly believe that Oda hasn't made it where he's returned yet because if he did then it may have spoiled many secrets like Lunarian. Anyways, let me know in the comments if you still think he's coming back and if you do then also when you think he's coming back so now with everything that i've explained as to why i believe god values the emerald city which also was known as the sky island burka now let me tell you what this has to do with blackbeard so in part three of this theory i explained how blackbeard wants to become the king of the pirates to actually rule the world and that he will also attempt to kill law to obtain immortality i do believe that in some way he is the new rocks just like how luffy is the new roger and as explained before you've already seen some of the connections with the four of them and oars well going back to that since luffy is carrying on roger's will he went to and found shandora just like roger right well what if just like how that happened blackbeard will find or has already gone to god valley what if before burger was destroyed blackbeard went to the island while it was still in the sky it definitely seemed that blackbeard knew about sky island since we see him be the only guy in jaya that tells luffy that it exists he seems very confident in his take and what if the reason for this is because he's gone to one before it also doesn't seem that he went to skypea or to upper yard since gonfall tells robin about the only pirate he's seen up there since luffy and it was roger if blackbeard didn't go to skypea then one of the possible islands that he went to is burka maybe this is where he even got the dream to be immortal or to be the ruler over the world he may have learned something about lunarians and emu while being there which may have triggered his insane plan burka definitely could have been where he at least learned about the Lunarian's existence because as we can see in the latest chapters it seems that Blackbeard actually knows about the Lunarian's race. He says quote white hair brown skin and black wings as his facial expression looks as if he can't believe his eyes. We also now know that Blackbeard was also at the Rocky Port incident with Law and Kobe. What if the reason Blackbeard was there was to take lost devil fruit abilities and give it to one of his crew members. We don't exactly know anything that went down that day so this is just pure speculation, but it definitely would make sense as to why Blackbeard was present in the same incident as Law. There's also a popular theory going around now that Blackbeard might be from Ohara. The theory goes that Oda said that if Blackbeard had a real job, he would be an archaeologist. We also know that he studies history in his free time. What other important history is there to study in One Piece besides ancient history? We also know that he believes in all legends of the world like the One Piece. His ultimate goal is to become pirate king and he need to be able to read the poneglyphs to do that. As of right now, he doesn't seem to have any other archaeologist on his crew or any people with a third eye. So maybe he is on his way to finding the One Piece by reading the poneglyphs himself. If he could read the poneglyphs and if he is an archaeologist, then maybe he actually understood the point of God Valley and its poneglyphs. If that's the case, then he could have learned a lot of the mysteries when he went to the island. Maybe he also learned something about the oars race at his time in Burka which may have led
led to the inspiration for his Jolly Roger, which is the Three Skulls. Wouldn't it just be so funny if all Blackbeard was listening to Bellamy say how the One Piece, the Emerald City, and the City of Gold are fake? He could be thinking in his head how this guy is just an idiot because he's seen one of them for himself. If he has seen God Valley, then maybe that's why he confidently tells Luffy that the One Piece definitely exists. Now, the last reason I think there's a big chance that Blackbeard went to Burka sometime throughout his life is because he shares similar beliefs to the people from Burka. One of Blackbeard's most famous quotes is, the age when pirates dream is ending, a man's dream never ends. Now, this is very similar to what the people from Burka believe since the endless Firth is known to also be a dream world. Maybe Blackbeard gained some of his beliefs while at Burka and he may have even learned about a dream world as well. Another interesting thing is that it seems that Mont Blanc Cricket heard the rumor of this dream world too. We see at the end of Skypea that Cricket and his monkey friends are gonna go seek another dream or adventure since the city of gold was finally proven to be in the sky by Luffy. Later on in the cover page of chapter 643, we see that they are finally setting out for the next adventure seeking Akrara, the island of dreams. Now, as I said earlier, I believe that the endless Firth is actually the ancient kingdom and if that is true, then that would also mean that the ancient kingdom is the island of dreams. So did Oda actually tell us the name of the ancient kingdom on this cricket cover page? Could the ancient kingdom's name be Nakrara? Plus, we know that Cricket has a hobby of searching for legendary islands or locations since he spent his whole life searching for the city of gold. Just like how Luffy ended up finding the city of gold and proving its existence to Cricket. Maybe the same thing will happen when he finds the One Piece or the ancient kingdom. A possible foreshadow of Luffy being the one to find this island of dreams is that in the very cover chapter where we learn the name of this island's existence, one of the monkeys is literally wearing a straw hat just like Monkey D. Luffy. Subtle hints like this is what Oda does best and it'd be insane if this actually becomes true. Another thing with this island of dreams could be showing you that yet again, God Valley and the City of Gold are two sides of the same coin. People that are connected to Burka believe in a dream world just like how people that are connected to Shandora believe in an island of dreams. So anyways, now you see why I believe God Valley is the Emerald City, Island of Burka, the place dedicated to the moon gods, and the missing Eye of Jaya. If you enjoyed anything I said out of this video, then please like it and comment anything you feel down below. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel because I have some more insane theories on the way that are just like this one. I have insane ancient kingdom theories, laugh tale theories, and many more. Thanks for watching and please remember to have a great day.